Hey, what is a data domain? Let me tell you a quick story. In my early years as a data professional, I've encountered this term a lot in webinars and you know live conferences on different data topics, articles and videos. And to be honest, I was confused. I was really confused and I don't blame it if you were too. And that's mostly because it didn't always seem to mean the same thing to everybody using it. Sometimes it meant that it's a data set, sometimes a subject area or a set of attributes and so on. So in 2021, I decided to dedicate a lesson to data domains in one of my courses on practical data governance and then write an article about this very topic. Since then, this article has been getting hundreds of hits on a daily basis. So I thought, let me create a video about it and explain it in a more visual fashion as well. Explain what is a data domain? It can actually mean a couple of things, depending if we look at it from the point of view of data management and database management or data modeling, if you will, or if we look at it from the point of view of data governance. Better yet, think of it as looking at it from the technical side or the business side. And you might say, George, why do we care about both? Even if you're in data governance, you need to understand the technical side because otherwise when you'll be talking to those technical data stewards, data custodians, IT, well, they might use the term differently than you. Even when you're talking to vendors, I think it's good to understand the different views of the same term. Ah, oh, yes, I know, I know, it's so frustrating for the same term to have different meanings. But working in data governance, it's something you'll get used to, as that's really one of the things that data governance will try to do. Clarify these differences. So let's clarify what a data domain is. And please stay until the end as I'll share with you some examples. Let's step in front of the computer for some visuals. Let's briefly look at the data domain from the data management point of view. The data domain represents the collection of values that a data element may contain. So let's take an example to explain that a little bit better. Let's look at a drop down field that we might encounter in a form, you know, a web form, a document, whatever. So let's um, take that example as the gender. You know, when we click on that drop down, we might be getting some options such as male, female, non-binary or unknown. But of course, there could be other options depending on your definition for gender. That's not the point here. The idea is that we would have these fixed options. So when we record this in a table in a database, the value assigned to gender can only be one of these four values. So we say that the data domain for the gender column is male, female, non-binary or unknown. Now let's now look at the data governance data domain, which is a logical grouping of items of interest to the organization or areas of interest within the organization. Data domains are high level categories of data for the purpose of assigning accountability and responsibility for that data. The data domain is also called the subject area. So you might encounter either. Let's take a look at some data domain examples. The first one that comes to mind that's the most common is customer. And customer, you know, they could be individuals or they could be organizations, corporations. It kind of really depends if you're a B2B or a B2C organization. But, you know, there's different flavors of customers depending on the industry as well. Product or service. These could be products themselves, you know, how those products are made. Uh, the build, the materials, different assets. So there's a lot of, again, different flavors of product data, especially if you're on the buying side or the selling side of the product. Location. Location is actually another common category of data domains. Uh, for example, it would include agencies and branches and hospitals, depending on the industry. Then you might have all the various facilities and floors and rooms. Those could all relate to data being governed by uh, this data governance office within this data domain. Okay, let's see what are some of the other common data domains that an organization would have. 
a vendor and supplier, transactions, order sales, uh, and legal is another common one. Now, an average organization would have anywhere between five to 10 domains. And they aren't always these domains, by the way. So these are usually the most common ones. In the end, it really depends on the industry that you're part of. What you should remember is that these data domains, they're really a way of grouping the most important data of an organization, and they go across business units and systems. So for the same domain, you might have different stakeholders from different lines of business and departments, and the data can be found in different systems, can be produced by different systems, or can be consumed by different systems. Sometimes when data doesn't perfectly slot into one subject area, you know, one data domain or another, data can be associated with more than one domain. And this is not recommended, but sometimes it's really unavoidable. So that's what a data domain is from a data governance point of view. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Check out this next video here for what a data subdomain is, and I'll share with you some really good considerations about it as well. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed it, and please click the subscribe and bell buttons as it would really help me out. Thank you, and see you in the next video.